Hi everyone, my name is Rachel Colton of RNC. This is my first YouTube video tutorial. I'm going to be teaching you how to make this macrame wall hanging. What you're going to need to create this wall hanging is either a branch of some sort. This is driftwood I found by the bay, cleaned with a bleach and water solution and left out in the sun to dry. If you don't have access to driftwood, you can use a dowel rod that you purchase at the craft store. And this is three millimeter single cotton rope that I purchased from Knot and Rope Supply. You can buy that online. For this design, you're going to be using three basic macrame knots. The first one is the Lark's Head Knot. That's what you're going to use to secure your strands to your branch or your dowel rod. Then you're going to be using square knots here, here, and here. And to create these diagonal lines, you're going to be using the clove hitch knot. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut um, a strand to hang the hanger from. So however long you want that to be. And to secure the hanging strand, you're just going to tie this to either end. And I just use double knot, just a regular double knot, one on each end. All right, so I went ahead and adjusted the hanging length to make it a little bit shorter. I've got my two double knotted ends and then I just trimmed off the excess. So the next thing you wanna do is you want to measure out all of your strands that are gonna be hanging and the length of your strands depends on how many knots you're going to be doing and how long you'd like your wall hanging to be. So I think for this one, I since it's a shorter stick, I'm just going to do two body um, arm span lengths, my wingspan. So you just kind of stretch this out from fingertip to fingertip and I'm going to do two of those because each strand is going to be doubled over your stick to start. And once you have your first one, you can use that to measure out the rest of your string. I just have my spool on the floor and I'm kind of untwisting that as I go. And then the number of strands is going to be determined by the length of your stick. Um, you want it to be an even number so that you can do your square knots. We're gonna do square knots. All right, so I've got 10 strands that I've cut to that um, two lengths of my wingspan. So I'm gonna start attaching these to my stick and then that'll help me determine how many more I need to cut. So we're gonna secure these with what is called a lark's head knot. So you're gonna double your strand over so that the loose ends are about even and then you wanna find the middle so that you have a loop. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over, take the loop over your stick and then you're gonna take your two loose ends and you're gonna pull those through the loop and then you're going to secure that by pulling it up to the top and then you have your strand on there. Alright, so I'm just going to continue doubling these strands over, line up the ends, find the middle where you have the loop go over and actually I'm gonna go on either end so that my stick stays even hanging on the wall and doesn't get all lopsided so you're just gonna secure those like that. Okay, line up the loose ends loop over, pull those through, 
and line them up. And I'm going to be, for this design, going across the whole length of my... Okay, so I had to cut a lot more strands. Um, as I said, the number of strands that you use is gonna be based on the length of your branch and the type of design that you're doing. You just wanna make sure that you have an even number for your square knots. So I'm gonna count how many I ended up using here. I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So 22 individual strands attached with the lark's head knot, which doubles the amount of working strands that you're using. And when you're using a natural branch, you're gonna have these knots and imperfections that you kind of have to just work around. And that's what makes your piece unique and interesting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a row of square knots. So I'm going to have four strands here and I'm going to take the outermost strand and I'm going to drape it across the other three. And then I'm going to take this fourth strand, the other end, it's going to go behind. So you have one outer string going over, one going behind. Then the one that's going over top, I'm going to tuck into this loop created by that other end and pull it through. And the one that's going behind the strands is going to come up through this loop. And then you're going to pull this tight up to the top. So that's the first half of my square knot. So now I'm going to reverse it. So this end that went under before is now going to go over. Kind of looks like a backwards four. And this one that went over now goes under. And then you're going to take the tails through the loops. This one that went over goes down behind. This one comes up through. Pull it tight. And that's your first full square knot. Okay, so I'm going to make a whole row of square knots. So I'm taking the right outer, it's going to drape over like a four. This outer string is going to go behind. This string is going to come up through. This one's going to go behind and through. And then I'm going to pull that up to the top and then do the other half. So now this one goes over, this one goes behind, pull the tail up through, this tail goes this loop, and pull it up. Okay, so we're gonna do a whole row of these. Okay, so the right outer goes over, left outer under, Pull up, bring through, pull that up, and then do your other half. All right, so our first row of square knots is complete, and I'm going to be making a triangular design. So what we're going to do for the second row is we're going to skip these outer two strands. So they're not going, we're not going to be working with those. You're going to take the next four and you're going to start your next row of square knots. Same way you did the first row.
so that they are alternating. And take the next four over under. All right, I'm about to finish this second row with my last square knot. And as you can see, those last two strands are not going to be in play for this row, just like they were at the beginning. So what you're going to do for your third row is you're going to skip those first two and the next two. So now I'm skipping the last four and I'm gonna pick up the next four to do my third row of square knots. And as we continue to skip strands, we're going to start getting this diagonal line. Okay, so I'm finishing up the third row of square knots, and then you're going to see that there will be now four strands on the end that are not in use just like at the beginning. So we've got these four and these four. And then one, two, three, starting on my fourth row, I'm now skipping two, four, six strands and starting here so that you have this alternating pattern of square knots. So I'm going to continue this pattern until I get that triangular shape that I'm going for. And then I will show you the next step after that. And I'm going to teach you a, another knot. So I continued with this alternating pattern of square knots where you skip another two on the end each time and I'm down to my last row which will have a single square knot forming the bottom of that triangle. And the number of rows that you end up with is going to be based on how many strands you start with across the top. So let's see how many rows we ended up with. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have eleven rows. I think we started with 22 strands, so it must be half. So the next knot that we're gonna do, I believe, is called a diagonal clove hitch. And this knot can be pretty tricky to master. I know I struggled with it at first. So I'll do my best to explain how it works. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna form this diagonal line of knots running along our triangle. And we're gonna take this end strand and that's what we're gonna knot the other strands around and it's gonna follow the shape of the triangle. Okay, so this end strand is gonna sort of come on top. We're gonna take the next strand, we're gonna come under our end piece, we're gonna come up over, and then go through this loop we've created. And then the next part is the most important part, I think, it's sort of how you pull the knot to the top. You want it to come around and under and then pull it up to the top. And you're gonna do that twice with each of these dangling strands. 
So you're gonna come up over through the loop you've created and then make sure this kind of just hangs, dangles down before you pull it tight. And then this one will now drape down again. So then you're gonna do the next one. It's behind this one that we're knotting around. So you're gonna come up and over and then you're gonna pull this through that loop that you've created. And then you want this, pull this down so that it's just dangling before you pull that tight. So again, here's the one you're working with. Goes up and over, through, pull it down, and then tighten it up. Next one, up and over and through, then pull this down before you pull it tight. Again. So I've just finished this diagonal clove hitch and your last knot will be the center. So you wanna keep an even number on this side and an even number on this side so that they meet in the middle. So now I'm gonna do the other side. So you're gonna take the very end strand and that's gonna be the one that you knot all the others around to form this diagonal line. So you take the next one, which is behind it, you go over and through, then pull this down before tightening it up to the top. Over through that loop you've created and then pull tight. Next one over that same strand. So I am at the bottom of this second diagonal clove hitch. I've got one more strand to tie. And then my two diagonal lines are gonna meet and since I'm doing some more knots, I could just leave them like this, but I think I'm gonna connect them. It doesn't really matter which side you use, um, but you're just gonna go back over top and then use the other strand just like you would if you were doing the other knots. And I'm just gonna do one to connect them since I'm doing some more knots. Usually you would want two to secure it, but then it's gonna kinda go underneath, and I prefer this look where it's just closed off. Okay, so we have now our alternating square knots that have created this triangle for us, and then we've kinda finished it off with these diagonal clove hitch knots. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do another row of square knots here. So I'm gonna take my outer four strands here and I'm gonna make square knots over, under, up through, down through, hold tight for my first half. And now since this is on a diagonal, you're gonna have a little bit of space here because you kind of you want your knot to be flat instead of up on an angle. So you're not gonna pull this tight. You're gonna keep a straight knot there. And then I'm gonna do the other side. This negative space sometimes makes a really pretty pattern. So you want this to be straight and then have this, this gap here. So then I'm gonna take the next four and do the same thing. We have now our square knots running down either side of our diagonal clove hitch and then meeting with one at the middle. So what we're gonna do next for this design is we're going to do another diagonal clove hitch line meeting at the center. So you're gonna take your end strand, that's gonna form your diagonal line. All your other strands are gonna knot around this one. So you take the next one, you go over under and through. You want to pull this guy down and then tighten that up along. So 
strand. We have reached the bottom of our second set of diagonal clove hitch knots. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do three rows of alternating square knots. And again, you want to pull these sort of tight on the one side, but you're going to have some empty space on the other side because you want these square knots to be parallel to your branch or your dowel rod. We now have one row of square knots meeting at the center. So what we're going to do is we're going to alternate these just like we did up here. So you're going to leave the last two off. You're going to find the next four. So you're taking the ends of these previous two square knots and those are now the middle. So over, under, up through, down through, pull tight. And again, you're going to end up with some of this empty space here because we have this we're working sort of on a diagonal so it's going to look different from the alternating square knots we did at the top instead of this tight mesh weave we're going to end up with a sort of striped effect it's going to look really cool so this is what it looks like after you've done three rows of alternating square knots you get these diagonal stripes almost but as you can see it's kind of flat right here at the bottom and we want to continue with the triangular shape so what we're going to do is we're going to add some alternating square knots down here so you want to find the middle of these two that are next to each other and we're going to do a square knot here and this is that, this is going to form that diamond shape in the center that I was telling you about. And then we're going to move over here, find the middle of these two knots, make another square knot there. So we have two right next to each other. And then find the middle of those, and you're going to add one more. And here's the little diamond that forms in the center. So the last thing I'm going to do for this design is I'm going to add another row of diagonal clove hitch knot. We have come to the end of our design. The last thing that I need to do is close up this last diagonal clove hitch. So I'm going to take this strand that I was knotting all these along and I'm going to flip it over and under this other side and I'm going to do two since it's the last one. I want to make sure that that knot is tight. All right, so there is our design. So the last thing you wanna do once your design is complete is you wanna trim the ends. So you have to decide how long you want this to be. And you could determine that based on your wall space or you could determine it based on the design. I tend to like long skinny ones. So I'm going to come down maybe about here and you could bust out the tape measure if you want to be really precise. I usually just um, eyeball it. Uh, so which, what you're, I'm going to do with this pattern is I'm going to kind of run it parallel with my clove hitch till I get to the center and I might want to start a little longer than what I'd like in case I don't get the angle right and I need to trim it back but you're just gonna cut the 
knees at an angle until you get to the center. And then I think I'm gonna come around to the other side. And this is where you might wanna get the old tape measure out or you can do what the hairdressers do just so that the two sides are the same and then you can kind of try to get the same angle going on either side and you can always adjust it. Looks like I've got some pieces here that are a little too straight across. It's also fun sometimes to have them be uneven. And then if you want to get some fringe at the bottom, you can kind of just go like this. Or you could sit there and untwist these if you want. Also over time, they'll untwist a little. Um, you could, other things you could do if you want. I've seen a lot of people put random, just single knots. You could put them at the bottom. You could put them throughout here to add more interest possibilities are endless. Here is our finished product. Ta -da! I hope you were inspired to try this wall hanging or to create a similar design of your own. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be adding some more tutorials, including more macrame, some Cricut crafts, some chalk paint crafts, and maybe some home DIY tutorials. Uh, since this is my first video, if you have any constructive feedback to offer, please leave that in the comments. Things you enjoyed, things that you did not enjoy, things you'd like to see me do differently. Um, I would appreciate your feedback so I can make improvements for the next video. Thank you.